Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with two humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. And the title of today's episode is Smell You Later, A Brief But Smelly History of Humanity. <laughs> and John... This is a good, you know, I mean, it's one fifth of the way we, uh, we interact with the world. Exactly. The old exactly. factory, the old, old factory. <laughs> you know, the other thing that, uh, I found interesting about that is once again, you have sent, you sent me this article, uh, and it's an article by, by Nicole Rodriguez entitled lab grown nose gives a whiff of how ancient humans used to smell. Weird. So, so once again, you've you've sent me an article about ancient hominids. I know. I know. I, I, that, I'm sorry. I'm. I know anthropology covers a wide swath of of what humanity is, but I keep getting. I'm so into early man. It just. I don't know why. You know, I was thinking we need to. Uh, we need to pitch a reboot of I Love Lucy where where you play Ricky Ricardo and your <laughs> wife, instead of being like a vivacious redhead, is an Australopithecus <laughs> afarensis. And you could you guys you still live in you still live in New York. You still run a club, but boy does she get you into trouble oh, when she comes Lucy. down to the club. <laughs> Lucy, and she's only three feet, feet, feet high, right? Right, right, with a brain about the size of an apricot. So, but she comes down and she attacks the club. You know, all the patrons are. I don't know. <laughs> but a shock of red hair. On <laughs> let's, oh god! Let's work on good. that. Let's put let's okay. put up the storyboard. Right. That's a good idea. People we'll love put it. that in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but I have to say this article had me from the get-go because as you know, and you maybe you knew this when you sent it to me, it, it checks all my boxes as a laboratory. <laughs> it has to do with ancient humans. And it has to do with smell. <laughs> it's like how could you not how could you not love this one? And uh it reminded me of remember Woody Allen's uh sleeper. Oh when they of course the nose. <laughs> the nose You're talking they about saved, the nose they were trying to save the leader's nose, you know. So. Yeah, so they could clone uh, him. <laughs> uh, and it also sounds like like a 1950s sci-fi movie. <laughs> like, oh, what, have, what has man done? You know, they're creating a nose in a laboratory, <laughs> playing God. You know, what happens if this, if this nose gets loose? You add that uh, nose to the AI and forget about it. <laughs> that, that's all it needs mm-hmm. to take over. It's just a smell us. <laughs> Uh, but before we discuss what exactly this lab-grown nose showed, mm-hmm. uh, I think we need to have a little background on how the olfactory system works. Agreed. We system. can't just jump right in. Right. No, <laughs> that's not the way we work on an intro to anthropology. We introduce you. Sl- everybody, let's just right. move in slow. We don't want anybody getting panicked when we talk about this. We're yeah, don't, we, don't jump off the high dive first thing. The shock of the water temperature just you know it's too much. Let's start in the baby in <clears throat> and slowly move in. Right, exactly. Uh, so in the upper part of our noses, there are receptor cells that mm. are connected to the olfactory nerve, okay. aka cranial nerve one. And these receptors are neurons or nerve cells, and we have millions of them, but we only have about four hundred different types. Of really interesting yeah, yeah. but combinations and smell different things is that how it works exactly between those okay. 400 we can get different types of smells that we have wow so millions of different cells but only 400 about 400 different types and what happens is the substances that smell or give off an odor release particles into the air and when those particles or molecules uh, that are in the air, enter our noses, uh, the olfactory receptors, those neurons, yeah. bind to specific molecules. Okay. And when a molecule binds to an olfactory receptor, it activates these receptor cells, which then send an electrical pulse to the brain via the olfactory bulb, 
which is like the olfactory bulb are two little blueberry shaped extensions of your brain um, where the, the brain senses smell and interprets what you're actually smelling. Jesus. So in a, yeah. in, 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 what you're telling me, this is shocking because mm-hmm. what you're <laughs> telling me is that there's no such thing as smell. There's just molecules floating in the air and we interface with those molecules vis-a-vis smell. Right. What right. we call smell. But right. there's no uh, quality in and of itself that's smell. It's just how we interact with those molecules. Maybe right. we're not smelling the same thing. When you're smelling jasmine <laughs> and I'm smelling yeah. jasmine, we both agree that it's jasmine, but we may not be experiencing the smell at this in the same way. Right, right. It you all depends I mean? upon our our neurons, our olfactory receptors. Damn. You know, so and it's is basically real. Is anything <laughs> real? Are we in a simulation? Yeah, I don't know. I don't I know mean, it's anymore. So bizarre. Yeah. Okay. I understand. I'm, like, I'm. Just let the AI take care of it. Just sit yeah. back and just enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. Mm-hmm. Okay, I hear. It's like you. a movie now. It's like. Uh-huh. A movie. But I can but, tell you right now, those two little bulbs that you're talking yeah, about, yeah. those probably look gross, I bet. They're like little <laughs> They're like little uh, snail. They're like two little blueberry bulbs that sticking out of your brain Ooh, towards your nose. Jesus. Okay. Um, but it's those, like you were saying, it's those electrical impulses from the olfactory re- receptors to our brain that determines what we Man. think is the smell. There's no objective smell out there like you... Like yeah, said. the molecules somehow turn <clears throat> into electricity, and the electricity tells us what the thing smells like. Exactly. Damn. Wow. God, it's weird. And and so there are two paths for these molecules to reach the olfactory bulb or the olfactory nerve. One is to come in through our nose and yeah. hit those, and the right. other is when we're eating something, and they work their way up the back of our throat as the food dissolves. It works its way up at the back of our throat and then reaches the, oh, the you old You don't need to tell me that one. <laughs> Anytime you get some vinegar going. Yeah. You get that weird bland thing going. Ugh. And, and, and that's how it, it, you know, it's smell or what we consider smell is a big part mm. of taste. And so that's why it's, it's actually those molecules now, instead of coming in through our nose, are working their way up through the back of our throat. Right. If you close your nose mm. off and eat a pear and somebody tells you it's an apple, you, you might, you, you wouldn't know. Right. Right. Okay. So uh, a few more interesting points about this. The olfactory nerve is the shortest sensory nerve that we have. Hmm. And the distance between the olfactory nerve and your brain is very small. So, it's, it's almost like you have, through your nose, you have an almost direct connection to the outside world and your brain. <laughs> so the nose is the gateway to consciousness. Yeah. It's the leader. <laughs> it, 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 it runs point. It runs yeah. point. Yeah, wow. which is amazing. I mean, it's almost like an open window into your brain. <laughs> That's so it's, amazing. Yeah. It's the hotline. You know what I mean? It's like the direct... In the office, it doesn't even have to go through the switchboard. It's just directly over to the director's office, you know. Amazing. It's right in there. (laughs) And this is why you have such an instantaneous response when you smell something. Mm -hmm. You almost are responding before you even know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Also, the olfactory nerve connects to the limbic system, which is the reptilian brain. Oh Jesus! Uh, which is that? I know you love the reptilian brain. I do. It it it, <laughs> it runs my show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I am somehow it, it, it's yeah. got a lot of power over me. Inside your consciousness is is laying on a rock somewhere <laughs> out in the desert. <laughs> and it, exactly. And, and whatever happens, you, you it scurries away. You know, yeah. Tries to find but if it. a fly comes by, now <laughs> it just it, its tongue goes out and grabs it. Um, and as we know, the, the, old, or the, or the limbic system controls emotion. And mm-hmm. in her book, The Sin of Desire, it sounds like a dirty book, but it's not. It's mm-hmm. actually a book yeah, about, Okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Awesome. You had to read it for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. I hear Alone, you. <laughs> I'd go in and lock the door out in the garage, out in my man cave. I'd go. 
Don't come in here. Uh, but Rachel Hertz says, says that we could say, quote, the ability to experience and express emotion grew directly out of our brain's ability to process smell. What? Yeah. Wait. Okay. So she's saying that smell inform it created emotion or or uh, it, yeah it grew out of it because that was like when our ancestors would smell you know you use your smell to detect uh fear maybe you detect you know if you were close to someone that was uh part of your group or mm-hmm. you know just if you wanted to feel at ease it was all through smell and so she's saying just because it's connected into the limbic system it you know there are millions of years of evolution between that but but it led to our uh, our emotions wow <clears throat> smell which doesn't yeah. really exist it's just these weird molecules <laughs> that cause an electrical impulse it, yeah makes us is 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 it created our emotions yeah or led to our emotion. led to them yeah led yeah. to them sorry so yeah. some over time the the hominids that had uh, that you know through whatever uh, had connections to the limbic system that that proved more valuable over time that the, the uh, somehow Jesus yeah. yeah okay that's weird yeah but it makes sense uh, and, and I know you're probably going to get into this but you know there people buy smelling things <clears throat> to to make smells to trigger smells cuz it it gets different feelings and emotions out and you know and you can buy you yeah know, yeah smell aromas the es- essential oils or mm-hmm. whatever you want to buy um but this is also why uh, smells trigger such emotional responses which is what you're talking yeah. about yeah and as you mentioned you know, you you can buy lavender, for example, or jasmine to make you feel more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably the most famous smell description and emotion is from is a Marcel fart. Proust. Oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's, it's, no, I thought you were going to say John Waters uh, polyester. Or something. Oh God, what a great movie! <laughs> you know, with the smell of ram and the smelling oh, card. Removed. Yeah, the little scratch and sniff. <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, but it's. Uh, it, it's from Proust where everyone always says, well, you know, they always talk about, well, in that scene where with the Madeleine, the little cake, he dips it you know, on a spoon, he pour, there's some tea on it. And then that takes him back to his childhood and he has all and, these memories. And that's the whole remembrance that that kicks off. Is that what kicks off the whole thing? All, all of his books? It's one of the big parts of it. To me, I got hooked on Proust. In, yes, I in know. College, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't get out like a sentence without talking about Bruce. Uh, but it's to me, there's another scene where he goes to see his uh, Aunt Leonie. Mm-hmm. And the narrator describes he goes into it. She's an old woman. She's a, a shut in. But he describes her her house in the small village in France. And he says, you know, you, you could smell the musty furniture and you smell the fireplace mm-hmm. and it's kind of damp in there. But the sun's coming through and the whole atmosphere begins to rise and smell like baking bread. So to me, that hooked me at that point with Bruce. I was like, I yeah. know that smell. I've been in a lot of yes. old yes. farmhouses in Kansas where that smell is is in there but yes. um and 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 it makes me remember you know i know you i know the smell of the house i grew up in you know i know yeah, that yeah. smell yeah and it, it it's it's so interesting and you can uh there's still i'm sometimes you'll be walking in a certain place and you'll smell something similar to that Mm-hmm. house that yes. you grew up in and it triggers it's and you're back there so that's yes yeah or it's a deja vu where you're or sort of thing where you're you're like what is that? i know that smell yeah. i know that yeah. smell yeah and then you put it but together that's, that's what the madeline scene is referring to is that idea that you'll hit these things that just take you back suddenly to uh-huh. to your memory that's um, amazing so back to the article you sent me uh, <laughs> so with this lab grown nose, you, you <clears throat> quote Proust and I just send you an apple. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> what? It seems to work, I guess. 
<laughs> it's all the same, really. We're all just molecules. Are we? Molecule. Are we even that? <laughs> I don't even know anything now. Touch, mo- touch is just what I mean. We're I suppose we'll get to that, but it's all electrical impulses too. Yeah, I mean this yeah. is crazy, Bill. What I if don't know it, who be, the hell I am? <laughs> we're just we're all just molecules in some other big being's <laughs> nose. You know. Uh, so in this study, what the researchers at Duke University and Paris Saclay University did was they took DNA from Neanderthals and Denosovans, who we've discussed before. Mm-hmm. Please see uh, our previous eps if you, if you need to know those. <laughs> right. And the researchers use that DNA to create 30 odor receptors in the lab. But how, for, like, what is it like, I mean, what are, are they cloning? Like, what are they doing? Uh, I think this one, they had just taken the DNA sequence Right to it wasn't a, a physical nose in there, but they took the DNA sequence as a, I guess electronic is the way you would do right. it, or some electrical or computer right. uh, receptor recreation of it. I don't think Jeez. there was an actual nose sitting in a petri dish. God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I hate to break. I know it's that's like, what you want. want I, well, I do want, want that. <laughs> it's like gene splicing, kind of whatever. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they figured it out. They they unzipped it. They figured it out, and they made and they made it for each of them. For a Neanderthal, they created thirty uh, odor receptors, and for a Denosovan, they created about thirty odor receptors. And okay. and probably, I mean, obviously, we would have more odor receptors <laughs> than that. But what they wanted to do is how see how these uh, you know prehistoric hominins how they interpreted smell, how it compared to modern human smell. Okay. And, and what they found is that Neanderthals had smell very similar to ours, but it was less sensitive. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder For, if they, and so that affected their emotions somehow too, I guess. Probably, probably. So they would affect their personality. Neanderthals yeah. wouldn't give a hell about it. <laughs> right, just, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> Come on over yeah. here. Get in my yeah, cave. Yeah. <laughs> Join you me. You know what, what's interesting though is that they weren't sensitive or as sensitive to the smell of sweat and urine like we mm. are. And which is probably that, good. Yeah, do you think that's what made us destroy them or 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 <laughs> that why we why we are the winners? I I don't we, know. We, I think we could smell prob- sweat and urine. It was probably good if you're living in a cave with about 30 other people. Well, to I'd be rather able. be the Neanderthal. <laughs> they must have been mellow. You know what I mean? They were like the yeah. hippies of the uh, yeah. uh, early man. <laughs> uh, they, weren't, they also weren't as sensitive to flower or floral smells and spicy smells. That's like me. I, I don't have a very good sense of smell. Do you know really? that? I don't know if you no. ever, ever told no. you that. Yeah, I I don't know. I attribute it to my cocaine abuse in my 20s. You know, I've been sober a long time. And so maybe that's it. But yeah, I need things to be super spicy for me to kind of really taste something. Isn't that weird? I mean, smell something. Yeah, and taste it and enjoy it. It, When you were younger, before the cocaine use, did you feel like you could smell things then? I I didn't have a memory of it. Never came up. It never came up back then that I I I never realized it. But later in life, being around my family, they're like, "What? You can't taste?" I'd be like, "I don't know." Yeah, you uh, you were a cook as well. Did you? Did that affect how you cooked? No, it didn't. (laughs) Everybody, let me tell you something about the kitchen of a restaurant. I don't know. I know I don't need to tell you. Yeah. Nobody's thinking about the, how good the food is back there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And here's one thing that a total aside, don't yeah. ever, 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 and back me up on this if you agree. Yeah. Send your food back mm. in a mm. way that makes the waiter upset. <clears throat> yeah. If you yeah. upset your waiter and you send your food back, you're eating spit. Right. I've never done it, <laughs> but boy, have I seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Why I would, would you rather... ever piss off the person who's bringing your food to you? Why would you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I Tell don't that know. chef that, that yeah. this is, yeah. This uh, is unedible. 
Yeah, I would get a doggy bag and leave immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like, just like, whatever. I am not sending this back. No, I never send anything back or complain <clears throat> because I've worked in a restaurant. The world would be a different place if everybody had to work in a restaurant, don't you think? Yeah. For a year? I th- yeah, I think there would be a lot more empathy. And mm-hmm. I think there would be a lot more patience mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. You know? And everybody would tip 20%. Yeah. Uh, so Denosovans, on the other hand, uh, mm-hmm. were more sensitive to sulfurous smells and balsamic smells, which are like vanilla mm-hmm. and chocolate. And Denosovans, they found also their receptors were very sensitive to honey smells, mm-hmm. which, which honey is a very energy packed substance. And yes. they, they think that, uh, Denosovans probably were very good at finding honey and honey was probably a big part of their uh, their diet. So when you got your, when you're, you know, if you're, uh, you know, uh, a Neanderthal and you've got your peanut butter, you go over to the Denosians. <laughs> Denosians? I forgot to, I don't know. Denosians. No, I'm, I'm there with you. Just please. Den- please Denosians. Uh, to get the honey. They're like Winnie, <laughs> yeah. the Winnie the Pooh of early man. Right. You could just look over there and see the dip in their, those furry fingers and that big crock of honey and like getting stung all <laughs> over but not giving a goddamn just, so you wait for the bees to go away and then you come on over and get some for your sammy <clears throat> simpler times simpler mm. times back then yeah uh so what about us modern humans and while most humans or while most animals use smell to help them find uh food and mates and mm-hmm. detect danger Usually, modern humans use smell just to find food. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as our binocular vision and our color vision got better, mm-hmm. we began to rely less on smell. In other yeah. words, we could we could find food with our eyes and uh, mm-hmm. by looking at the color. Like we could see berries and fruit and trees, and we didn't mm-hmm. have to sniff it out so much. And wow. and so as that happened, our for modern humans, the sense of smell began to de- decrease in importance. Interesting. And, and there's a couple reasons for that. One of the reasons is that a highly developed sense of smell takes up a lot of brain space. Uh, and then secondly, to have a highly developed sense of smell, you need to have a long snout <laughs> to contain all yes. of those all of those receptors. Those receptors. Yes. Like yeah. my dog. Who right. Like a dog. Smell anything. Yeah, yeah. We're a bear, dog, dogs something. can smell cancer or whatever. I mean, that's yeah. am- it's amazing. But you see what happens. You have to have that long snout with all the receptors, yeah. and that gets in the way of the stereoscopic vision. Mm. So, so, so people who our- had a mutation with a shorter snout hmm. t- tended to be able to see food and danger better. And so slowly over time, right, and we're talking right. long time, yeah. The snout yeah. people with shorter snouts, uh, better vision, longer, yeah. Shorter mm-hmm. snouts began to to become more advantageous to them. So wow. our noses got smaller, our eyesight got better. Fantastic. There. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what so- about pheromones? I'm sorry. What about pheromones? Are those? Is that smell? Like if uh, uh, they? Yeah. We, you we'll know? get to that. Can, oh, can, good. can we oh, wait good. to get there? Because yes, we'll, we'll kind of get to some more of that. But yeah, okay. I think you're. All right. we, we do have a segment that we'll talk about. God uh, damn, you're good. And... You are really, really <laughs> no, good. I just know you. And I knew you were going <laughs> to ask about pheromones. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope. It's, I, have you bought them online I, or something? <laughs> are, you, are you wearing them now? When am Please I not talking me. about pheromones? You know? <laughs> Me, it was produced every other sentence. You as pheromones. Oh, I got some pheromones. <laughs> look what I got. I bought it from Mad Magazine. They were selling Here, it in the back of it. Take a look, put a little bit on your on your, between your thumb and your finger and snort it up. Trust me. You're going to love this. Just an excuse to like uncontrollably go after people. <laughs> uh, so a couple things about smell. First off, probably the most underappreciated sense. Yes. Where a lot of people think it's the under, mm-hmm. underappreciated well, ESP. Sense. There's that one. <laughs> yeah. That's like five, five A, or is that a five with a little one underneath? <laughs> you actually have like you consider eight 
eight senses that people it, have. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, think of a number. <laughs> think of a number right now. Okay. Oh, you got one? Yeah. It's a three. Oh, it is. It was. Yeah. It was. I told you. Yeah. I told you. Jesus. <laughs> Spooky, but all right. You proved it. Uh, during COVID, a lot of people lost their sense of smell. Yeah. As you know. And that yeah. kind of, people started thinking about as anosmia, which is a loss of smell. But it wasn't before COVID, people didn't pay much attention to other no. people that, that said they had lost smell. Yeah. Mm. And in fact, one in 20 Americans are supposed to have uh, smell loss. <laughs> so it's wow. no, no laughing matter. But I mean, it's it's that's, that's me. Maybe that's me. I'm <clears throat> one of those yeah. people, you know. And uh, maybe they say that people who have lost their sense of smell experience uh, personality changes. What do you mean? Well as... <laughs> <laughs> What's that, that mean? Fuck and me, we... fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <God. laughs> we come back. We come back and you and I are wearing different shirts. It's obviously weeks <laughs> later. The weather outside has changed. I have a different haircut. <laughs> anyway... Uh, <laughs> uh, but they report personality changes as well as feeling depressed and disconnected from the environment. Mm, boy, that's me. And unable to enjoy eating or sex. Oh, no, that's not me. <laughs> I, I like those things. There's still a few re receptors left in that old, <laughs> that old snout of yours. It's like uh, a Model T. We can crank it up. <laughs> get it just enough. There's just two receptors for yeah. food and sex. Food yeah. and sex. <laughs> just back and forth. Hey, I'll use my binocular vision for the rest, okay? I'm fine. It's, it's like a two-stroke engine. Just <laughs> food sex, like food a, sex. It's like a mini bike. <laughs> uh, Michael Hutchins from In Excess, remember? He had, yes. had, had been punched, and then he, he fell and had a brain injury. And they mm -hmm. said that that brain injury, he lost his sense of smell. Hmm. And and people that knew him said, you know, before the accident or before he wasn't an accident, it was an assault. Before the assault, he had loved, he had been like a yeah, libertine. You know, he loved drink, he loved food, mm -hmm. he loved sex, he loved ever all sensuality. And yeah. after he lost his sense of smell, they said his personality completely changed. Wow. <clears throat> Maybe that led to his suicide or right, exactly. Because wow. he became more depressed, sometimes aggressive with people. He he couldn't enjoy uh, sex anymore. Food, which he used to love, gourmet food. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. Um, also, in the introduction to the book Aroma, <laughs> of course, the cultural history of smell. Not You're amazing. Smelly, not the smelly history of smell, which is what, <laughs> what we're doing. Uh, the authors say that smell is a social phenomenon invested what? with particular meanings and values by different cultures. Okay, it, yeah, we're we're all, hmm. but but that, doesn't that go for every sense, really? Like, uh, my son was playing uh, his band. He's a drummer. He's fourteen. He's really good, and he was playing uh, with his friend, and they were screaming. I forgot what do they call it? Emotional <laughs> hardcore, hmm. emo, yeah, emote, emote hardcore, something like that. Where you yeah. scream, you like the yeah, yeah. guttural screaming with it's hardcore. And yeah, but it was at his school, and pa and parents are like getting up and leaving. <laughs> oh, no. Really, the guy who was singing his buddy Angus was just. But yeah, you know, yeah. Them, I know this is not really what you're talking about, but to them, that's music, and to others, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's there's a subjectivity to it, mm -hmm. I think, but um. But yeah, I think there would also be, as far as smells go, a lot right. of what we consider to be good smells or bad smells were passed down to us from from our parents or from our culture. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, like if you say, "Oh, a skunk smells bad," if if mm -hmm. you if you were taught from a young age that a skunk <laughs> maybe smell good, right? Uh, then if it you would associate be associated with a source of food or <clears throat> something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's really interesting, and because I was never um, exposed to Eastern Indian food when I yeah. was growing up in Kansas. 
And yeah. so when I first smelled the you know, the curry, the the you know the the yeah. spices and I was I associated it with what is that? It doesn't and it took me time to and now I'm I'm like I love it. Yeah. But it took some yeah. time to relearn <clears throat> because you had never been exposed to it. Mhm. Mhm. So uh and also our reactions to smells have changed over time. As humans, mm. our reaction to smells. Because the world used to be a much smellier place. What? I think. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's smelly now, but it used to be a much smellier place. Yeah, and- you're right. Those woolly mammoths. <laughs> can you imagine? They get wet, right? Yeah. And then they walk just, around. Oh, oh, just Jesus. like a wet dog smell. <laughs> Ooh, just- but the size of a house. You're Ugh. just... Sitting in your cave full of, full of oh, urine God. and feces oh. and like, oh, no, but that woolly mammoth is just yeah. too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rotting. Just, yeah, just to uh, like, get that thing out of here. <sighs> uh, but in, in cities in the ancient world, you, you had smoke from fires. For example, everybody was using a fire to smoke or mm-hmm. using uh, fires to cook. Mm-hmm. Uh, and heat their homes. You had rotting garbage <laughs> out everywhere in the, in the streets. Yeah, yep. You had dead animals, <sighs> dead humans in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, we also had sweat and urine, and then probably the most overwhelming smell of, in the ancient world would have been excrement. Yes, still is have, right. Mm. I mean, that. Yeah. Well, I guess maybe the uh, death of a body is probably. I, I've never smelled one, but. Um, that's supposed to be like the smell of all smells. Like people can't I, take it. Yeah. I don't know if that, if even that would be, you know, people all, often say that, well, that's like a natural reaction when mm-hmm. you smell a dead body. But I don't know if it's, if it's a natural response, if you didn't know there was a dead body and right. you never smelled it before, if there would be a subconscious reaction to it, or if it would just, it's when you realize it's a dead body that yeah, you have your associate. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, you know, at, back in those days, you had excrement and public latrines. <laughs> Good <laughs> so, boy. But also, people would just throw their chamber pots out into an open sewer out That's in the middle of the street. Insanity. <laughs> I just can't believe they would do that. I know. I mean, they got to know that that's not a good idea. Why were people yeah. doing that? It it was just the way they did it. You would think it's one of the first this, things yeah. you would figure out with civilization it was like, okay, we got the four walls. <laughs> yeah. Let's, now let's figure out a way to get all this crap out of here without yeah, us having how to do smell we, yeah. it all the time. God, it took the Romans. The Romans yeah. figured it out. Uh, right? But even in the Middle Ages, they went back. The Dark Ages, everybody went back to just <sighs> throw in chamber pots out into the middle of the road god <clears throat> they should have listened and, to the romans and you know the uh all the animals that you had pulling around carts and everything, they were oh, all like oh, god, crapping around right. it. jesus yeah. i bet if we went so, back in time it would just be like oh my god i can't imagine <laughs> i'd be a good time traveler because i don't have a good it, sense of smell yeah, I'd, I'd be but one of the be, people. We'd be like, instead of like Bill and Ted's big event, you and I would be like, we'd show up, <laughs> take one whiff, and be like, oh <laughs> no, oh no, no, no. Let's I go mean, back. back anybody in the who's back in the- anybody who's ever been camping and used the camp out uh, bathroom, <laughs> no, no. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. You know. Yeah, just imagine if you want to get that sense, just go go camping, go to the pit yeah. toilets. <laughs> yeah, close the door and stay in there for about an hour, yeah. and that yeah, will give sleep you a in there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's, Jesus, that, that's what our ancestors had to deal with. God, <clears throat> that's horrid. Yeah. Uh, also, remember there were no zoning laws at that time, so mm-hmm. so you had industries right next to all of the houses. So oh God, you you would have tanneries. Food. Uh, that tanneries use, use yeah. dung to, to tan leather they used I, dung i didn't know that yeah that was one way to tan leather for oh my god so somebody's job was to rub dung <clears throat> on animal <laughs> oh my yeah. god yeah. until what happened why it, that somehow made <laughs> something about the dung a chemical in the dung made I don't maybe I don't maybe it was a practical joke that got out of hand. <laughs> you told <laughs> that's just you told gross. some guy to go, hey, go rub this over, and he's like, that's did it for years. Just and then, 
horrid. Hmm. What was wrong with us? Yeah. Uh, laundries would use urine because of the ammonia. Well, that clean. makes sense. I do that. <laughs> you want you want to say money on pods? <laughs> you just crawl up on your your dryer, open the washer, and it saves at- lots of money. It cleans the clothes. I I, I lower water bills. <laughs> yeah, it's like the buffalo. We use everything over at my house. <laughs> just- just counting the savings. Uh, and then you had, like you said, the slaughterhouses mm. were right in the same neighborhoods where everyone lived. Oh, and those, and now we know how those <clears throat> smell because you and I grew up in Kansas. Yeah. And ooh, that ooh. is a rough smell. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. after the jungle, the book, you know, that's after yeah. they've gotten it cleaner and safer, you know? Yeah. yeah this is the improved version. Yeah. This that. is the modern way of murdering millions of animals. Uh, there was also a profession called uh, for a cesspool cleaner. <laughs> so when they would throw all of this crap into uh, you know, a, a cesspool, there were people who would come around. Usually they tried to make them come around late at night when everyone yeah, was nobody asleep. Nobody wants that disturbed. <laughs> oh, so let me get this straight. You got to get, <clears throat> I'm one of those guys. I have to go out and shovel shit in pitch black. <laughs> yeah. That's my job. You, you'd have to put it into a wagon and then carry it outside the town. And, oh and dump my it out there. God. Yeah. And it's dripping and sloshing. And oh my yeah. God. It's just, and you're wearing hide, but the hide's been tanned with excrement. <laughs> I, it's, oh. it's awful, is it? <clears throat> awful, awful. The good old days. The good old days. Mm, yeah. Uh, there were like master cesspool cleaners, <laughs> which means it must have been a, a union of it, and you had to work your way up to do, like I don't want just anybody coming out here and cleaning that no. shit out of it. But you want that done right <laughs> the first time. You, know, you don't want it. You don't want a problem. <clears throat> yeah, you know, with that. Yeah, we learned that when I bought my house. We had the sewer backup. <laughs> and lots of things you can wait on. But poo in your house, you can't. That's, that's, it was on Christmas Day. We had oh. to get it dug out. Yeah, it was so expensive. and But you can't. What are you going to do? Leave it? You uh, No. <laughs> so you had somebody, uh, he had to like, he gets a call yep. opening up gifts or something. Like, I got to yep. go. Yep. <clears throat> Yep, they made a lot of money, but it, they had to work on Christmas, or was it Eve, Christmas Eve, or something like that. Yeah. Speaking of specialists, you were at one point a chimney <coughs> sweep. Yeah. A very and good chimney sweep. <laughs> there were, uh, I would say this was, a chimney sweep is like a few steps above, <laughs> better than being a cesspool cleaner. Oh, and no, hell yes. No, hell yes. but I'm just saying cleaner. it's. Yeah, I'm just saying it's an ancient, a relatively right, uh, right. old, uh, and and you need somebody yeah. to do it right, you know? Yeah, and I would say, too, uh, they used to say that you could tell somebody's profession by how they smelled back in the day. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, a cesspool cleaner, when they show up for mm-hmm. you know, parent-teacher <laughs> conference or, like, <laughs> invite your dad to work day, oh, people yeah. probably, I- yeah. I, I, you could, people can smell the Hollywood on me. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I smell complete bureaucrat. People see me and they're like, oh, man, where's a bureaucrat? And they look around and see I me. I smell red tape. <laughs> yeah. Slowing it down, slowing it down the line. Uh, but, but a chimney, yeah, the chimney sweep, I remember after I get off work. Again, I'd be covered in, in filth, and, and there was no singing. It's not like Mary Poppins. No, they, yeah, no dancing. My brother and I, I weren't up on the roof dancing around step in <laughs> no. time mm-hmm. or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the ash and that creosote smelled awful in there. Yeah. If you get it on you and you start sweating. Well, you'd find uh, animals and stuff up there too, right? <clears throat> yeah, every, dead birds would be up there. Oh. A lot of times, a few times, nothing interesting as far as money or... Human heads, people, nothing <laughs> yeah, like people that. Would, people <laughs> would hide, th- hide things up on the smoke shelf back in the day. So you'd find oh. old, you know... I can't remember, nothing interesting. Oh. Nothing interesting. But, no, I'm sorry. Well, you know, if I ever do it again, I'll <laughs> know how to do it better. I'm going to leave something on my smoke show. <laughs> yeah. Then ask me over to, to clean it. 
Uh, one writer in the 1820s said that you could smell Paris before you actually got to Paris. Oh my God. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so uh, he said in Paris was supposed to be the most cosmopolitan city in the world at that time. Arguably. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he said it was just so awful. The smell uh, before you saw any of the towers, <laughs> before anything, you'd be like, Oh, we're almost there. You know, I could smell it. It's so um, funny because hmm. there is a, a smell that New York has. It's not an unpleasant smell, but it's a distinct smell. <clears throat> yeah, very unique to yeah, most cities have it with the like garbage smell, with yeah. food, people, just the yeah. the, the humanity. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and also in ancient Rome, they would uh, do something. They they like Romans like really strong tasting foods with a lot of uh, onion and garlic. And they also used a fish sauce, a fermented fish sauce. Oh, here we go with the fish sauce. Yeah. I'm not a fan. <laughs> really? I, I yeah. love fish sauce. But... You do? On yeah. what? Yeah. Like what? In what kind of meal do you like fish like, sauce? Like with like Vietnamese food. Okay, or I do Chinese love Vietnamese. food. Maybe I'm yeah. eating more of it than I think. Yeah, what are you, how much are you putting on there? I don't know. I just you know, it's a condiment. You just kind of you don't eat that full on. <laughs> I drink just... it like a shot. <laughs> just a... <laughs> we need to go out to eat sometime. I just want yeah. to see what you what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> but the room, you know, the the thing that they say is bad. What smells bad is not so much that it, I mean, Rome, ancient Rome, probably smelled. You had all these smells going on with garlic and onion. Oh, and Caligula! And, Imagine yeah. that when he was around. <laughs> Uh, but they, you know, the ferment, the fermentation when you're making the garum is when it's supposed to smell really bad. Okay. So, Cause it's just dead fish that you're fermenting. Just, you're fermenting fish. <clears throat> yeah. God, yeah. that's gross. <laughs> uh, but the Romans still worried about personal body odor and like bad breath after drink, you know, you really? go spend the night drinking and vomiting all over the place. Yeah, you know, that's true. Up. They would just upchuck whenever they were full. <laughs> Didn't they use dogs <clears throat> as napkins? Like they'd have dogs know. under the table. I read that somewhere. I don't know. The dogs would they you, just wipe their hands on dogs. You've told me that. I need to look that up okay. because I don't know where you got that. I don't know how that got in my head. <laughs> it's a striking image though. It, really it almost is. I don't know. To me, with like we should maybe if we could save some Save some paper, save some trees by going back to wiping our hands on dogs. God. Everybody's going to get poodles so, and things that don't shed. Try not to get white. You know, you want to yeah, get yeah. some dapple color. You want a labradoodle. Another reason to get a labradoodle. <laughs> come here. Come here. <laughs> come here. <laughs> uh, Let's see. And, you know, the Romans also, they would remove their underarm hair because of the body. Really? Of their, that was when they that helps. It, it, well, <laughs> how does that we can help? have an experiment? Yeah. We can have a little I'm going to shave one. I'm going to shave one <laughs> yeah. and do my own experiment. Scientific uh, I guess, method. I like I guess it. it. But I guess if you don't shower, uh, yeah, I guess stuff will get caught there. Maybe. I don't <clears> know. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in religion, people felt that. Uh, smell revealed the inner essence of a person. Mm. So that's why you would mm-hmm. have a belief that good spirits smelled pleasantly, mm-hmm. uh, whereas evil spirit, spirits smelled bad. For mm-hmm. example, you'd have the, the, you know, the Bible and different things talk about the, the smell of sanctity, mm-hmm. but you had the stench of the devil. Yes. <laughs> the devil... Well, and in Catholic uh, incense, the use of incense. Um, what's the thing they use in the Catholic Church? That ball that they that censor or something. Yeah, that, that thing is? is cool. I love that uh, thing. And some people have said, you know, not only there was a belief at that time that your prayers went up with the smoke, <clears throat> but also some people say, well, maybe they did that because ever, all the parishioners <laughs> smelled so bad. That they had to, like, the priest had to do something to be like, I can't be in there. Them, you know? yeah, we gotta get the, <laughs> this. We gotta either shorten the mass 
or get yeah. get more incense. Give me that ball. Yeah. Fill it yeah. with incense. Yeah. Just mm. run around, just shaking that thing. At From now on, it's, <laughs> we have to do it every mass, <laughs> especially yeah, especially the rows in the back. <laughs> uh, and witches and lechers were also supposed to smell bad. So if you read mm. the, about the history of witches or yeah. <laughs> lechers, somehow lechers got in there too, but they smell bad. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, the different classes were also defined uh, by how they smelled. So the wealthy, <laughs> the wealthy always thought that they smelled good. Yeah. Uh, well, they didn't do anything. Yeah. And they, they wore perfume. Wore yeah. 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 You you think of that like French nobleman, you know, with the all the lace and the <laughs> you know, you, uh, uh powdered and wig the, and face, yeah, all that crap. Little handkerchief dipped <laughs> in some sort of oil. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh and the poor were supposed to have obviously smell bad. Yeah, and it wasn't work. Yeah, just because not only because of that they actually did stink, probably, mm -hmm. uh but they they were a lower status, so people would associate the smells with whatever smell it was, uh, mm -hmm. with the status of the person that was <laughs> that was mm -hmm. emanating that smell. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's like driving cars today. <clears throat> you, know, you pull up, <laughs> is in it? A, you pull up in a nineteen eighty one Tercel. <clears throat> that's yeah. just the same thing as smelling bad. You know, <laughs> okay. all these people okay. leasing Teslas. Yeah, I yeah, see where I, you're. I, I see love, where you're going with that. <laughs> it's time. It's time for a revolution. <laughs> uh, prostitutes were also associated with bad smells. And, really? That, yeah, be, that because of their seem... status. Because of their yeah, status. okay, okay. So people who, but isn't it? Yeah, it's if you think of a prost. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I, I'm with you. Yeah, and. Uh, for example, in in Spanish, the word puta, or mm -hmm. in French, putain, which means whore. And mm -hmm. excuse me for, I know for that. using I I hate using that word, but uh, <clears throat> but those words puta and putain actually comes from the Latin word putrid, which wow. was a reference to their smell. Wow. Okay, yeah. man. And uh, and it also goes for older people. <laughs> older people were also uh, traditionally thought to smell bad. Well, that's, you know, hmm. as we get older, we have a unique smell. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it that way. I mean, everyone knows that. I uh, I even put on deodorant for this podcast today. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I went for a run and just put on a t-shirt. Oh, no. No, yeah. really? Ooh. Yeah. I, uh, you oh. wouldn't. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Thank I God. I just we're... pulled off a sweaty t-shirt and put on this one to make it look like I wasn't sweating. But yeah, no. I was so self-conscious by this topic. I, I, I took a shower. I took a shower before we, we did this. You live our work. You live it. Yeah. Yeah. When you take on a topic, you you <clears throat> dive in. Experimental archaeology. I take five showers a day. <laughs> keep smelling good. Uh, the smell of death, which you mentioned before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in ancient Greece and Rome and Egypt, they would wash and perfume the bodies yeah. before they, they buried them. And one of the reasons was, well, the smell that uh, accompanies decomposition mm -hmm. and as the body decays, that's the, the person is actually losing their individuality or their physical mm -hmm. individuality. Mm -hmm. And so the idea possibly could have been that by bathing them and keeping them smelling good was a way to prolong who they were before. Uh -huh. <clears throat> That's interesting to give yeah. sort of a transition, a segue. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And the other Before thing the was, inevitable. was to, uh, you wanted them to smell good when they finally reached the afterlife. <laughs> you, don't, <laughs> you don't want to get to, you know, Hades or wherever you're going. And, and well, if you're down there, it doesn't matter. It's going to be hot. <laughs> but that's, you, I, that seems <clears throat> crazy to me. If there's an afterlife, yeah. surely. Surely the ability to make us all smell okay <laughs> seems possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You would hope. I mean, yeah, you don't need to take a shower down on earth. Before. 
I'm just going to do it before I go. I'm going to do it anyway. Just Listen, to be safe. if I have to pull the plug on you, <laughs> I will instruct everyone to give you a good bath before yeah. we say yeah. pull the plug. And where's his old spice? <laughs> he wants his old yeah. spice on. Get him he smelling goes. good. <laughs> uh, the the early Christians though always thought that all those perfumes and stuff were were a sign of Roman decadence. Mm-hmm. So the uh, so the early Christians didn't like to bathe or perfume as much as the Romans. No, did, set okay. themselves apart. Everybody's about setting themselves apart from each <clears throat> other. Yeah, yeah. And uh, without refrigeration, you know, a lot of meat would oh, decay. God. Like in your house, a oh. lot of that meat would decay and start oh. to rot and smell you ever, bad. You ever dealt with any rotting meat, like really <laughs> no. bad with maggots? No. Have you ever come across it? It I is one of the worst. Hands, yeah. It is the worst thing <laughs> ever. Yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Not the smell, but even the maggots are. are just, like, oh, the maggots super... alone. It's just we've. T- this is the second time we've talked about maggots. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But the maggots it. love it. They love. They love it. it. <laughs> they love it. They love it. <laughs> They'll go crazy over. It that just goes stuff. to show it's all cultural. It all yeah. depends on your point of view. <laughs> Uh, what they used to do back in the old days is they soak all that bad meat in vinegar and then cover it with spices so that you would still, you wouldn't throw it out because you had oh to eat Oh my too. God, you're so kidding you me. No, no. Oh, so. that must have made people sick. <clears throat> yeah. Everybody yeah, was maybe. just squeezy all the time, probably. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. just always sort of nauseous. Yeah. What a way. No wonder the Dark Ages came on just everybody was just nauseous and uncomfortable diarrhea yeah smelling like vinegar and rotting meat <laughs> Jesus. Just and boring. they say the puritans the puritans also didn't like to use spices because they thought that was a sign of decadence so oh, man being a puritan was rough mm. Yeah, just imagine that first <laughs> first Thanksgiving in Plymouth and be like when the Puritans show yeah. up and be like, oh God. Yeah. Everybody's just like, what? I'm eating cardboard. <laughs> yeah, this is Where's awful. the salt? Everybody yeah. stops eating and looks at you. Yeah. yeah. Did, you Decadent. did you say Decadent. salt? Decadent. Get yeah. him. <laughs> uh also, you know, back in the uh Middle Ages and actually up through the 1700s, the the idea was that smells disease was carried through through bad air, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. where you get even the term uh, ma- malaria is actually saying bad air is, uh-huh. is the, mal bad airy yeah. airy air. Even yeah. like in all those old uh, in novels and stuff, they're always opening up the windows. You know, yeah, to let yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always opening up the windows. Yeah, get to get that bad air out of here. Yeah, um, I guess doctors would would come in and smell the the head of their patient <laughs> to see to see what uh, or come in and smell the patient to let see. Let me see. Come here. <laughs> yeah, now you're all right. You're all right. It's not much more different from what they do now. They just I know get on it's the true. iPod or iPad. <laughs> Just, they just, I just say just iPod. Smell. Oh yeah, my yeah. God! Sorry, nine, nine Gen Zs just turned us off. <laughs> so I said iPod. <laughs> Actually, they might be fascinated by yeah. our oldie tiny speak. Someday I'll give a talk about the rotary phone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good. great! Mm. I would love that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, but you know, some doctors even at that time thought that <laughs> the smell of sewage could keep away the plague <laughs> so Wait. it was like <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah so what that you would fill your house with sewage well just you wouldn't try to clean up that oh my open God. sewer that may have been the reason oh. why you were talking about why didn't they fix that maybe it was they they thought that that, that feels sm- like a, a, the thing like a black cat or you know a, 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 <clears throat> a walk you know walking under a ladder is bad yeah. luck the yeah. reason that came about, in my opinion, is because it's dangerous. And so people said it's bad luck to walk under a right. ladder so that people can get. So I feel like it's a similar sort of thinking with the sewage. It's like, look, we can't do anything about it. Let's make <laughs> yeah. it into a good thing. Yeah. It wards yeah. off, you know, whatever. Leprosy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just leave thinking? it out there. Yeah, I, make I it do. A good I think thing. it is. Yeah. Otherwise, Just you got to a- call that guy to clean the cesspool. <laughs> it's. It's making you healthy. Look how good you look. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, and th- they also thought, you know, people didn't like to bathe then because they thought that you're, you're first of all, you didn't have access to water in yeah. the cities. But they thought that if when you were wet after a bath, it made you more susceptible to the bad air. You know, well, so when true. you get out of a bath. That's hmm. absolutely true. <laughs> and, Not just the bad all... air, bad anything. You ever lay down on a, you know, <laughs> anything will stick to you. <laughs> they didn't, they hadn't invented terry cloth yet. Yeah, yeah. No towels. You just have to have some dirty you water. Just air. And put your clothes right back on. You get your dust dirty stuck clothes. to you. It's like getting out of the ocean, you know. <laughs> Uh, and they also thought that by by taking a bath, you were like, if you got rid of your body odor, you were taking away your sexual vitality. Mm, maybe that's so, something I need to revisit. <laughs> so men at the time thought that that kind of musky smell that they had or developed your own personal body odor was like an animal's musk. And it Absolutely. would attract. It would Absolutely. Attract. That's like we're getting into the pheromones, I'm, I'm guessing. But, you know, that's <laughs> yeah, we're like. Getting close. That's like uh, Aramis. You ever smell Aramis? Remember Aramis? No, no. It smelled like like sweaty guys. <laughs> you don't bathe. Oh, really? So weird. You take a bath and then you'd put cologne yeah. on that smelled like sweat. Really? <laughs> the musk. That's interesting that he was he, Aramis was also a uh, one of the musketeers, right? Wasn't he? Three musketeers. All oh, right. There we go. Boom. Thank you. Smell and like a done. <laughs> smell like a Old French soldier. That's what yeah. you go go out for the night. <laughs> uh, but you know, there was a time when all all classes smelled bad, actually, and and they report that Versailles, the Palace of Versailles, had a cesspool <laughs> right right next to the palace. Oh and, my uh, god! Oh. Yeah. What is a cesspool? That's just it's just a big pond of poo that you just empty yeah. your stuff out in there. So they would just, all of those people in God. Versailles would take all of their poo down near the palace. God, Versailles is a the big cesspool. place. All yeah. those servants, yeah. all those, ro- all of them. Hundreds of people. Yeah. Three and, and so times you think a about day. when you see the, you see Ooh. the movies now with like in Versailles and the King of France. <laughs> just imagine <laughs> in reality, it'd be like, they'd be out there walking around and you just smell crap mm. all over oh, the uh, garden. Oh my so, God. That just, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's, I'm there was a story. We are. <laughs> there was a story I read where uh, it, it probably a joke or satire or something, but some guy from the provinces came and stayed at Versailles and then when he went home, he had all of his own servants pee around his house so that it would smell like smell like the royal <laughs> palace. So, wow, it was that hmm. bad. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just real quickly, it brings us to the scent of the other, which mm-hmm. means that the idea that usually a predominant culture will say that other, you know, less predominant or less dominant cultures uh, smell differently or smell bad, which is what yeah. you were kind of talking about with the different mm-hmm. spices. Usually it's from the food that people make. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause it's not, it's <clears throat> not something I'm used to. Therefore it's bad. Right. Right. And it's always been, uh, it's been attributed in, in our country. It's been attributed to like Jewish people mm-hmm. also with Chinese people or African Americans. Mm-hmm. The predominant culture has always tried to say that they had a different smell or an unpleasant smell. And <clears throat> what's interesting about that is, uh, you know, Western Europeans, when they went colonized other parts of the world, what, they were always surprised to find out that the indigenous populations thought that they smell bad. <laughs> <Not> that Western <laughs> Europeans smell bad. And so there's, I've read reports where it was kind of shocked to hear that, what, what? we smell bad as well. Yeah. You know? It's always the other. Well, like yeah. um, uh, that, uh, Shogun. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember that book, Shogun? Uh, yeah. There's a big part of it because, like, the English weren't bathing at the time, and when he shows up, he, he you know, he, he shipwreck on Japan. Oh, That's the whole story, yeah. and all the Japanese are like, "Oh my God, hmm. we got to bathe them yeah. immediately." Oh, this guy's yeah. disgusting it's with awful. his long hair. Yeah, he's been on a <laughs> ship for six months or something. He's like, "Oh, God. Ooh, um, rats and yeah." <clears throat> uh. And then, you know, like, while people like Napoleon was supposed to use cologne every day, he was known for wearing cologne. Uh, but most oh, men in God, the 17th... I hate those guys. 
<laughs> I hate those really? guys who work. Somebody, I feel like we've got to start telling people when they have too much cologne. Like we, we've got to make Bro. that socially acceptable to say, "Hey, ease up, man. That's intense." Really? <laughs> really? I mean, you know, we, talk- well, yeah. If you're on a plane they, or something, and yeah. it's, it's just so much. Yeah, that's one of the things they talk about is your olfactory. The smell can invade somebody's personal space without you actually getting into their personal space. Yeah. That's right. It's, uh, that's <clears throat> what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, it, it, just like you- if you scream. If you just came up and screamed at me, <laughs> I would say you're hurting my ears. Yeah. <laughs> keep it, keep, go, scream, go scream in your own house. <laughs> how would you how would you broach that with him like, so i don't let's know do a low would, role play i would never do it i would You're never screaming. do it I'm, oh with a screamer i would no, just no, take with, it I'm, no. a, I'm a or the or the smell i i wouldn't say the, anything i don't say anything yeah. i don't want any trouble from anybody <laughs> <laughs> uh, not me <laughs> i See, find a nice the, yeah. excuse to go somewhere else yeah, it's Live easy to, to say, like, day. oh, why don't we do that? But then you, you come in <laughs> no, with somebody no, with I, a lot of cologne. When I say, why like, don't we do that? I'm <clears> saying, why don't other people do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, interesting, in the Victorian era, uh, era, people began to associate odor with being bad. So then mm. for all of our existence, we live with this odor. We live with all this. Uh, mm. But then... In Victorian 1800s, we started to think that, hey, <laughs> we shouldn't be smelling so bad. Hmm. And uh, in 1930, George Orwell actually wrote that the difference between the classes was that the lower class smelled. Mm-hmm. And he was meaning that is like, really, that's what comes down to is that there's a visceral reaction to the manual laborers and people who who work. Uh, Interesting. And uh and and again, it was because uh, at that time it was usually kind of the middle class or upper class that actually had access to plumbing, right? Could, you know, right? And 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 it's <clears throat> it's hard work. It makes sense. Jeez. Yeah. And uh, today we're basically an odorless society. So like, you don't want to have too. <laughs> you don't want to have body odor. Right. But you also, like you're saying, you don't want to smell too much like cologne right. or perfume or yes, something. Yes, you're right. Everybody <clears throat> wants to be beige, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. let's beige it up. Don't yeah. too much, not to, you know, just come and kind of ride right through. No <laughs> troubles. Get that, that sweet spot in between the, <laughs> the two. Uh, and so kind of getting back to, we're, we're going to get to what you were talking about, the pheromones. Uh, our sense of smell has been called our most sexual sense. Okay, and here the- we go. I love it. <laughs> you leave this to the end. It's good. Yeah. It's smart. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people have been trying to figure out, well, what, what is it that, what is about the scent of attraction or whatever? And when, some of the research I read said that we have a set of genes that determine our immune system. And this set of genes is called the major histocompatibility complex or MHC. So it's MHC is a set of genes that determines our immune system. Mm -hmm. And the genetic manifestation of the MHC is our immune system. And the physical manifestation of our MHC is our body odor. (gasps) What? Yeah. That is crazy. Everyone has a unique sequence of genes that make up their own MHC. Right. Or their scent, their body odor. Wow. And it's kind of like a, an odor print or like a fingerprint. And it's unique to you. Now, if you're an identical twin, they say you'd have the same MHC smell as your identical twin. Uh, and in 1995, Klaus Wedekind, who's a zoologist, led a team of researchers. And they were trying to see, like, how, you know, if women choose men based on their MHC meaning based on their body odor. And what Wedekin found was that women in the study usually chose men to be more attractive who had the most different MHC and immune Ah. systems from their own. So it's about being different. It's about being unique. They don't smell other people. And so they think you're special because they, you smell different to them, which is so weird because everything else that smells different to us, we associate as bad. 
Right. But with this... But consciously or subconsciously, we're attracted to people who have a different immune system. You know, us. that makes sense, because if the idea is to spread the genes, <clears throat> right? If yeah. The idea, it's better to be... It's better to find people who are very different from you, right? It gives yeah. a better chance yeah. uh, of the population surviving. So, right. you know, because if they smell exactly like you, the chances are they're maybe clo more closely related to you or, or similar in some other way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's Incredible. interesting because, so because you're that saying means that my wife chose me because I smell. I smell. <laughs> well, <laughs> you smell differently from her. So yeah. it, it's Boy, that's what that they, she found attractive. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she found attractive about it. Or maybe well, we she all was kind of smell attractive. the same now, my whole family, because we use urine to wash our clothes. <laughs> yeah, so, well, we, all, we all smell like my urine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that what that was? <laughs> I was wondering. I didn't want to say anything. It's musk. It's <laughs> musk. Uh, and so then to get down to pheromones you know everyone talks about pheromones and trying to mm -hmm. find pheromones and trying mm -hmm. to find something that will make people uncontrollably attracted to you mm -hmm. and you'll see on the internet they'll sell pheromones or you know mm -hmm. different things the modern and, spanish fly right and one of the you know example of that is androsinone which is a pig uh a, a pig pheromone which pigs use to to you know find a mate and, and know oh. when the mate is ready to. to do mate. people rub that on them, <clears throat> themselves? Or no, what do they no, do well, with that? They... That's an example of a, of a pheromone. Oh, okay. Um, I see. But, you know, pheromones aren't processed with the olfactory system. So they're processed by something, another organ or another bundle of nerves that's called the vomeronasal organ, which what? is separate from the olfactory bulb. Interesting. So, the vomeronasal organ actually detects large molecules. So when we talked about all those molecules mm -hmm. that were coming through, mm -hmm. it, it attracts large molecules. And But unlike dogs and, you know, other animals that use pheromones to communicate, humans lose their vomeronasal organ after birth. So we don't, really? as adults, we don't have a vomeronasal organ. Interesting. So, so this whole thing, it, it just means that we don't seem to have the ability to detect and respond to pheromones. So it's all bull. Like it's all bull. It's all bullshit. I don't wow. Know. But if you do have hmm. the ability to detect pheromones, is that a sixth sense? Do our dogs have six senses? Well, they have the vomeronasal organ. So right. It's that's only humans I'm, that don't have it. I know. So, that's what I'm saying. So dogs can see, smell, taste, touch, and they can detect pheromones. Is that six? Yeah. Plus ESP, because uh, my dog definitely <laughs> can read my mind. Yeah. yeah. There's no question. They know, they know when it's walkies. You know, oh, when, it's like when he looks at, well, and he'll look at me sometimes and look right through my soul. I'll be like, yes, you're right. Uh, so just a, a few more things before we wrap up. You know, you can't smell when you're asleep. They've done tests where they've tried to, they look at the brain scans of people when they're asleep and they'll put smells up to their nose when they're sleeping. Really? Nothing. 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 Yeah. But what about if I cracked an ammonia tab like under your nose? You wouldn't, wouldn't wake up? It wouldn't be the same. You might wake up from me being right up next to you. When right. you wake up, you would smell it. But the actual yeah, don't do it process. to me. I was talking about doing it to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the experiment is all doing. Yeah, it let's to you. time to go camping. Time to go camping. You know. <laughs> Try out all this stuff. Hmm. Uh, but they think maybe it has something to do with uh, the context of smell. Like you need to know that you're awake and. You're aware of the context of smell wow. in order to interpret that being a smell. And when you're asleep, that part of your system that determines the context is not active. And therefore, you don't find smells. That's amazing. Or you don't do. Yeah. Um, but when I dream, it. I can smell sometimes. I feel like I can. Yeah. I don't know. I don't dream but that that's, much. That's like in your right. subconscious. That's memory. Something. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. 
Also, in some parts of India, smelling the head is a traditional greeting, which oh. I kind of like. Kinda yeah. like. It's, and, and they talk about the Ramayana says, I will smell thee on the head. That is the greatest sign of tender love. That's I'm gonna nice. do. I'm gonna smell your head next time I see you. I'm I, gonna adapt. To that. me, yeah. Don't. It's so much better than shaking hands. I agree. <laughs> start doing it at work. Yeah, and it's intimate. I like it. <clears throat> Go in for a job interview. Just yeah. Grab somebody's head and give a big <laughs> sniff. <laughs> uh, in some traditional Arab cultures, also after dinner, the hostess will pass around a perfume box. And people will, each of the guests will take out some of the perfumes that are in there and put that on their hands and on their wrists so that later when they go home or, you know, go out afterwards, they'll still smell the pleasant smell of the dinner. Oh, it's on, like an after, the... it's like a gift. <clears throat> it's like a, yeah. it's like a party gift. Yeah. With, that's a good idea. Isn't that That's nice? a really good idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you smell it, you're like, oh, the party, that was so nice. Next time we have dinner, I'll, I'll pass around about you open it up and it's Aramis. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I know you said you loved it so much. Enjoy. <laughs> It'd be like Aramis and some Axe body spray. In there. <laughs> All right, John. I think wow. we've... Wonderful. We've... Wonderful. You've taken me on another magic carpet ride into <laughs> what it means to be human. And I just can't thank you enough. Um, no, nope. this is uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say just a little homework for people. Just be sure to pay attention to the smells. Just yes. be conscious of how it makes you feel. What the smell of a room is like. Stop and smell just... the roses. Is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, don't not not metaphorically. We want you to stop and yeah. smell it. Get uh, down I'll... there. Well, that's great advice. This is uh, human number two. And this is human number one. I just want to thank everyone for joining us. And also just to say, if you have any ideas or any questions or topics that you feel humanity should know about and we should address, always, always feel free to reach out to us. And we will try to get to those questions. Until sure then, will. John, thanks for everything. Same here. This was great. And we uh, will talk to everyone later. Thanks, everybody. Bye.